Saturn is reasonably small, but some of its moons are so large and complex they could easily qualify as planets. Over the past 300 years, astronomers had little to say about these fascinating places thanks to spaceflight. However, that has changed. In 1979, Voyager and two flew past Jupiter's four largest moons with their cameras rolling. Radioed pictures reveal that each moon has a unique personality and features never seen before. I.O. The innermost of the four moons was the most surprising. Unlike our moon, its surface is mottled and sulfurous. Its surface is devoid of craters. The craters seem to be erased by a mysterious agent. Voyager 1 spotted something unusual, protruding 300 kilometers from one side of Io. A giant volcano erupted in a fountain of ash. Since then, it has become apparent that Io is the most geologically active planet in the solar system. The surface of Io is one giant larger flow, with more than a dozen active volcanoes towering over the sulfur-rich landscape. Io generates vast amounts of heat because of the tug of war between Jupiter and some of its other large moons. This results in a dynamic surface, but it is inhospitable to life. Callisto, Jupiter's outermost large moon, could not be more different. Callisto's battered face is dotted with ancient impact craters, suggesting that little has happened here since it formed. It is easy to be deceived by appearances. Ganymede, our largest moon and one of the most peculiar looking in our solar system, shows signs of a geologically active past. Recent data suggests there might be salty water beneath Callisto's surface of ice and rock. The survival of life in such an environment remains an open question. A dark and heavily cratered area of Callisto Unlike the dark areas, the parallel grooves and ridges of the more recent terrain break up the dark areas. Exactly how these ridges and grooves form remains a mystery. Ganymede also has a warmer interior than Callisto. Ganymede's interior may have once been heated, causing parts of its surface to drift apart as on Earth. The heat likely caused Ganymede's interior to separate into layers, starting with an iron-rich core at its center a rock mantle surrounding it, and a layer of ice on top. On Ganymede, there is evidence of an ocean of salt water below the surface, as there was on Callisto. Ganymede may finally maintain life with the right combination of heat and water. However, life forms such as these would be isolated from the sun. Ganymede has an ocean beneath its frozen surface, 200 kilometers deep. It might survive on chemical energy, like deep sea creatures around Earth's ocean vents. That possibility will not be tested for a time. There may be a better opportunity in Europa to explore the ocean of another world. Europa appears to be the least interesting of Jupiter's moons because of its flat, smooth surface. A lack of dramatic relief, like large craters or mountains, might show nearby water. Cracks crisscross Europa's ice crust, occasionally breaking open, letting slushy water spill out. Scientists found what appeared to be icebergs floating apart in one area before the surface reef froze. Europa's ocean is on the top of the list of locations where scientists are eager to search for alien life today. The surface ice of Europa has some cracks that are darker and redder than the rest. The ocean beneath could be rich in sulfur compounds and organic molecules. There is some sign that this ocean may be closer to the surface than 10 kilometers in some places. The possibility of drilling down and exploring another planet's marine environment may be within reach in the future. I expect many mysteries to be hidden on the moons of Jupiter. Titan was shrouded in a thick orange haze when Voyager 1 arrived in 1980. Titan, Saturn's giant moon, is hidden even from view on its surface. Our solar system's only moon with a substantial atmosphere is Titan. 
Titan's atmosphere produces a haze similar to the photochemical smog when sunlight reacts with methane. Scientists would have to wait for an entire generation before revisiting Titan. When Cassini landed at Saturn in 2004, it used a high-powered camera equipped with an infrared filter to peer through Titan's thick haze. Cassini found a surface divided into mysterious light and dark regions resembling ancient coastlines. Titan has also been detected by Cassini, confirming that the moon's surface is solid and has unusual landforms like ice, volcanoes and wind-blown dunes. Cassini's radar made a further discovery after several more passes of Titan. There were a series of dark patches that were perfectly flat, resembling the surfaces of small lakes, prompting scientists to search for more direct evidence of fluid flow on Titan. Cassini's probe descended slowly into Titan's cloudy atmosphere after deploying its parachute. Images were transmitted to Cassini. As soon as it emerged from the clouds, the probe saw exciting details, as if the liquid had carved them. Finally, the probe survived its impact and sent back a spectacular image. On Earth, Rocks in a stream bed are surrounded by a fluid flow, like chunks of ice on the planet's surface. Since Titan is so cold, water is like rock, but methane, a gas on Earth, can rain down from Titan's atmosphere and flow like liquid over its surface. It is a component of the kinds of complex molecules that led to the emergence of life on Earth. In addition, if Titan has an internal heat source, like some of Jupiter's moons, it could harbour its ecosystem deep below the surface. In our exploration of the outer solar system, Titan and Jupiter's moons have become more than just sideshows to the planets they orbit. Water appears to be a given on Earth. 70% of Earth's surface is covered by water, and its presence is essential to life on the planet. Water plays a different role in the dim reaches of Saturn's outer solar system. In these regions, temperatures are near 100 degrees Celsius, and water is everywhere. Water cannot exist in a liquid state. It is so solid that it remains frozen, even though it covers planets. The world depends on it. At Saturn, ice is the primary ingredient in forming moons. Cassini has revealed spectacular details about Saturn's moons, surrounded by an entire family of icy moons. Scientists hope that exploring these frozen worlds will reveal an ancient story about Saturn and the entire outer solar system. Phoebe is undoubtedly the first moon Cassini encountered up close, as it was the first of Saturn's moons. Phoebe is too small and its gravity too weak to pull itself into a sphere just 200 kilometers in diameter. Phoebe was found to have a carbon-rich surface with deep craters that exposed layers of bright white ice below. Phoebe is darker and contains more rock than Saturn's other icy moons. It did not originate near Saturn, but in the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune. This zone contains ancient objects. These are the original building blocks of our solar system. Phoebe escaped from that region and was later captured by Saturn and transformed into a moon. Observing this moon gives us a glimpse of what we will find at a great distance from the Sun. Besides being four times closer to Saturn than Phoebe, Iapetus is also four times larger. Although it is 80% ice, its most distinctive feature is its two-tone shading. Iapetus has a black side and a whitish-gray side. It is also significantly more remarkable on the black side. This difference equates to about 15 degrees warmer on the dark side. Scientists now believe that dark material may have fallen long ago onto Iapetus from the surface of Phoebe. Dust received more of the sun's energy on the side that received it. There, the ice sublimated, leaving behind grains of dust and rock that darkened the surface further. In the meantime, the vaporized ice resettled on the other side of the Iapetus and around its poles, creating the appearance it has today. Cassini discovered running along Iapetus's equator, thanks to a long ridge, that it looks like a walnut. The ridge rises to 13 kilometers in space. We do not know what created this bizarre feature. It probably happened when Iapetus spun faster and had more internal heat shaping its surface. 
Hyperion, an irregular honeycombed object with an odd shape, moves closer to Saturn. The shape and appearance of Hyperion suggest it is the remnant of a giant moon that shattered in a collision. Perhaps it is not even solid, but a loosely packed pile of rubble. Cassini's measurements reveal Hyperion has over 40% of its mass in space. There are signs of ancient collisions on Saturn's moons, including Rhea, Dione, and Tethys. At first glance, these three round moons seem to be identical triplets. The two are over a thousand kilometers across and covered in craters from billions of years ago. Each is a variation of the other. There are distinct characteristics among the three, suggesting a more complex and diverse past. Kuzma, for instance, wraps around Tethys like a waistband in Ithaca, a vast canyon. Tethys may have formed this long ago when its icy interior froze and expanded, causing its crust to stretch apart at its seams. Scientists observed a series of wispy white lines running across Diani's surface from afar long ago. Cassini revealed the lines of the bright faces of cliffs formed when internal forces repeatedly shattered Dione. Rhea presented Cassini with indirect evidence that this moon was surrounded by a dark, dusty ring, making it the only moon anywhere in the solar system with its ring. At least one of Saturn's icy moons may have once been geologically active, but subsequently cooled and grew dormant. This has enormous implications. In addition, Enceladus has a diameter of 500 kilometers. This object size is usually too small to sustain heat for billions of years. Enceladus is not like other planets. Cassini's investigations of the surface have revealed a strange and puzzling sight. Cassini spotted a considerable water vapor geyser near the south pole of Saturn. During Enceladus's orbit around Saturn, the vapor carries dust grains, which escape into space and form a diffuse ring. In addition, Enceladus is stricken with long, deep gouges nicknamed tiger stripes, from which the geysers are said to arise. Stripes surround fresh eyes. This suggests that temperatures below the surface are sufficiently high to melt ice and hold liquid water under pressure before venting into space like a tea kettle. Enceladus is at the edge of our solar system's icy region. The exact mechanism by which Enceladus does this is unknown. According to Cassini, Saturn's moon Enceladus has more rock and metal than many of Saturn's other moons. Saturn and its moons produce powerful tides, so it is warmed by a combination of radioactive heating from within and tides from Saturn. Of even greater interest are the organic molecules within the tiger stripes. Enceladus has all the ingredients for life if liquid water is present. This is an astonishing discovery. The icy moons of Saturn are strange. Science's goal is to learn how these strange worlds formed and developed, despite their utter differences from Earth. Why, you ask? There must be countless icy moons in the universe, if there are so many in our solar system. There is at least the potential for life whenever one of those moons gets warm enough to melt the ice into water. Perhaps this is our best shot at answering the age-old question, is there anyone else out there? For centuries, astronomers have thought of the solar system as an orderly place where planets, including Earth, go about their daily lives in peace. Today, we realize that the solar system is a cosmic shooting gallery filled with asteroids and comets that could threaten life on Earth. Exploring these objects is therefore not simply a matter of science, but survival as well. This is an ironic result. The danger posed by comets and asteroids to life on Earth is part of what motivates our interest in them. There is a strong possibility that life on Earth would not exist without comets and asteroids. The discovery that the Sun is just one star among billions and Earth just one planet led astronomers to assume that there are other worlds beyond our solar system. It took nearly four centuries since the invention of the telescope for us to find these worlds which is a technical challenge of the highest order. We have seen a revolution in our ability to discover and study planets beyond our solar system in the last 15 years. The following 15 years will be even more exciting as Kepler and its successors attempt to find planets like Earth. Once they find such planets, 
they will look for evidence of life. It is easy to be deceived by first impressions. After follow-up missions with better cameras began in the late 1960s and early 1970s, it became clear. The planet Mars is more interesting and diverse than anyone ever imagined. Impact craters were present, but there was also evidence of colossal geologic activity. Giant volcanoes were towering over the Martian plains, larger than any on Earth. The largest, Olympus Mons, rises to 24 kilometers, three times as high as Mount Everest. Consequently, this is the tallest peak in the solar system and Mars. The impressive structure results from many eruptions of lava that repeatedly flowed across the surface for billions of years. Olympus Mons rises from a giant bulge known as Tharsis, making Mars a lopsided planet. Eventually, it led to a spectacular split in the planet's crust, leading to this gigantic canyon. Its size and scope are unimaginable. It is ten times bigger than Earth's Grand Canyon, and four times more profound. Currently, the most detailed images of Mars come from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, a spacecraft that carries the most powerful telescope ever sent to another world. Mars has never been seen in such detail, allowing us to resolve details on the surface as small as a dinner plate. Mars was once wet, based on the images that suggest water flowed there once. The dunes of Mars are majestic, and there are dust devil tracks left behind. It appears there were layers of sediment in shallow Martian lakes, long before the giant canyon formed deep inside Valles Marineris. Water once flowed on Mars, as evidenced by the shape and orientation of the terrain. As we cast our eyes beyond the Valles Marineris, to a series of significant but empty channels leading from the Tharsis bulge toward the low-lying regions further north, the evidence of watery pasts becomes stronger. Although they have dried up long ago, these valleys were most likely created by vast outflows of moving water that cut across the Martian landscape. The water then spills across the northern plains. Some of these channels are a hundred kilometers across and cut through thousands of terrain. Scientists have drastically altered their idea about Mars since they were discovered. These channels bear all the signs of catastrophic flooding and show that water abounds on Mars. Today, Mars is too cold and too thin of an atmosphere for liquid water to survive on its surface. What caused this water to be released, and where did it go? The Tharsis bulge can probably answer the first question. According to some recent research, Mars's giant volcanoes were formed by the intense heat that formed the release of vast quantities of water from its crust. The water initially flowed underground, but it broke through the surface, creating today's features. Other evidence suggests that water flowed on Mars billions of years ago. Observations from orbiting spacecraft suggest that much of this water lies frozen underground as permafrost near the Martian poles. Unlike the rest of Mars, the polar regions of Mars are distinctive. Both the north and south poles of Mars have visible caps of frozen carbon dioxide that expand and contract with the seasons, and both have a smaller underlying cap of water ice that never melts. Additionally, the poles have different surfaces. An abundance of ice mixed in with the rock in these regions, causing cliffs and crater walls to slump, giving them a smooth, rounded appearance. A recent development on Mars is the discovery of gullies running down the sides of craters and canyons. They were formed by groundwater seeping from the cliff faces and running downhill. As small as these features are, they must be recent. If they were older, wind-blown dust would have obscured them. Does liquid water occasionally bubble to the surface of Mars? This would have profound implications for life on Mars. Several decades of exploration have revealed that Mars may have once been home to liquid water and life. Even today, Mars may continue to be an active planet, as evidenced by recent observations. At least geologically, it is not yet a dead world. There is still a borderland there. All of this gives us an impetus to explore Mars further. Like the famous voyages of discovery centuries ago, the journey to another world is fraught with danger. Viewing and sensing from space have their limits. In order to determine whether Mars is a living world, we must touch, taste, and smell it. We can only accomplish these goals by exploring the surface of Mars. Additionally, when it comes to landing on Mars, 
Making a robot that can land itself on Earth is challenging, as humans have never set foot on another planet where they do not know changing conditions. There will be little room for error between a safe landing and a major disaster. In the last two minutes and 25 seconds after the entry point, the peril is most dangerous. In addition, to do it in a place so far away, even a simple call for help would take several minutes to reach Earth. That would be a significant challenge. That is precisely what needs to be done to reach another planet. As of now, six landers have successfully landed on Mars, and they have transformed our understanding of the planet as only first-hand experience can. Scientifically, these missions have revealed the geologic history of Mars. In addition, these missions have profound global implications. When our probes land on Mars, we are not just looking for the ancient past. A new era in space exploration is dawning. A new beginning. A Viking spacecraft and two others became the first to establish a beachhead on Mars 70 years ago. Earth's deserts immediately recalled Earth's geologists. When the Vikings arrived, the similarity disappeared. NASA's Mars Pathfinder landed near the mouth of the Eris Valley, a large channel that appears to be carved by water. Boulders slanting downstream surrounded the landing site. The flood was ancient and violent. It does not entirely rule out life on Mars, but any life that survived here would have had to be sheltered underground or in another inaccessible location. The next successful attempt to land on Mars would not come until 1997. A small rover was the highlight of the mission. It rolled off the lander and trundled up to the nearby rocks to analyse their compositions. A set of wheels was needed to solve the mystery of Mars. Early in 2004, two rovers named Spirit and Opportunity landed safely on Mars. Each rover travelled on Mars by motor. From the beginning, the two rovers were in very different settings. One was at Gusev Crater, the other at Eros Crater. As revealed by the orbital evidence, standing water may have left its mark on the soil chemistry from an ancient lake. In the meantime, the Opportunity won a historic victory. Spirit opened its electronic eyes to find a barren plain littered with volcanic rock. The probe was sent to Meridiani Planum, where remote sensing identified hematite, an iron-rich mineral associated with water on Earth. Meridiani initially appeared to be a flat, featureless plain, but a miraculous opportunity landed in a small crater with an exposed rock outcrop. For the first time, scientists will sample rock on Mars where it formed. Everyone found that the opportunity was beyond their wildest expectations as they wheeled up to the outcrop. There was ample evidence that the rock formed in a watery environment because of its layers. As the rock weathered away, hematite was exposed as tiny spheres called blueberries that grew precipitating from the water. Having investigated the terrain near the landing site, scientists sent Spirit rolling toward a set of distant hills nearly four kilometers away. The trip to the hills would take three months, and climbing them would take even longer. Spirit had finally reached the top when she radioed back a panoramic view. Spirit descended to the other side of the hills during the following years, survived three Martian winters, and eventually found the home plate. Those are the remains of a volcanic vent where hot rock once came into contact with water. Meridiani did well as opportunities spread across the plains, uncovering an even more extensive rock outcrop, whose layers read like a geological history book, an ancient tale told of a place that once was wet and acidic, while there was no water at all at other times. We have seen an adventure unlike any other in our exploration of the Red Planet with the Mars rovers. After nearly two years, a more roving opportunity arrived at Victoria Crater and recorded one of the most breathtaking views ever seen on Mars. The newly arrived Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter captured the moment in space, spotting the tiny rover perched at the crater's rim. Water used to flow in places on Mars. Scientists then wanted to know how much water is present on Mars today. They have shown us Mars over many years and kilometers, instead of an isolated spot for a brief time window. Scientists expected to find water locked deep beneath the surface of Mars' polar regions, frozen in a frozen state beneath the surface of the Phoenix lander, which was modest compared to the Mars rovers. Low mounds surrounded by troughs dominate landscapes like this. In these mounds, the soil has been forced upward by the expansion of ground ice. 
Phoenix discovered something white just centimeters below the surface using its robot arm. Ice proved that Mars used to be wet. In the low-lying northern plains of Mars, where there may once have been a Martian ocean, Phoenix landed. Phoenix could not confirm this, but it found that the soil here is alkaline, similar to seawater here on Earth. All these missions have shown that Mars once was a water world, even though it is hidden from view today. It will be up to future missions to determine for life on Mars. Recent missions have already paved the way for human life on Mars. We may build the leading edge of a fresh wave of exploration that could take astronauts to the red planet one day. In that case, the human story on Mars has already begun. The solar system's outer reaches were always cold enough for gas molecules to stick together and form ice. That ice accumulated into ever larger chunks until gravity took over, pulling in vast amounts of material billions of years ago. This set the stage for planet formation on a considerable scale. Cassini's images of Saturn make it one of the best planets imaged in our solar system, despite Saturn's distance from Earth. Saturn continues to amaze and delight us with every new image it takes. You would be better off if you had a spacecraft. With the invention of the telescope, we discovered that there is much more to our solar system than meets the eye. Pluto and Neptune are compelling cases, not Uranus and Neptune. While powerful telescopes can probe the solar system's outer limits, these worlds remain remote and mysterious. It will be the end of an era when New Horizons reveals Pluto. Pluto is no longer officially referred to as a planet, but it represents the last type of object in our solar system that we have not yet seen up close. Discovering what lies beyond the horizon has challenged explorers for generations. Because of the invention of spaceflight, we are now discovering alien worlds with vast new territories. With the help of intrepid machines blazing a trail across the solar system, we see the sun, moon and planets with penetrating clarity today. Their cameras have been our windows on an adventurous and daring journey. In our solar system, there are over a hundred moons. Almost all of them orbit Jupiter and Saturn, the two most important planets. Jupiter has many moons orbiting it. Collectively, they range from small to large, cold to hot and quiet to active. There may be a hidden haven for alien life somewhere in that range of possibilities. Jai Maa Mari Nina, Tu Da La La Ba, Kwa Pa Na La Na Tu La Ba. Oh, 
Papa, na, 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 Jemma, na, 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 na